from the Deer and Deer Hunting Headquarters here in Iola, Wisconsin. Welcome to Deer Talk Now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dan Schmidt along with Brian Lovett. We have a great show today. We're going to talk with Ted Nugent, the one and only Ted Nugent, Detroit City madman, rocker, political activist, and deer hunter. That's what we're interested in. We're interested in Ted Nugent, the deer hunter. We're going to talk to him today, but it's not going to be toned down. It's going to be full throttle action, and he's going to answer every question that you had. You, got, you sent them to us on Facebook. You sent them to us on Twitter. We're going to ask your questions. We're not shy. What do you think about that, Brian? Well, uh, always insightful, ever articulate. Ted is always a great show, so I am anxious to hear what he has to say as usual. He's, he's going to be on because he's always on, and we're going we're to get to Ted in just a minute. A lot of people watched our coyote uh, hunting show with Corey Lundberg, and they were asking about what particular call when they went to shopdeerhunting.com, which particular call, we actually have one right here. It's the Icotech uh, electronic call. This is the one you want to get. This is the one that has really been performing, and coyote hunters and especially have been really um, having a lot of success with. You want to get one, you can get 10% off of it today. Enter Deer Talk now in the coupon box as you're checking out. You're going to get a great deal on it. So check it out. If you're going to do some predator hunting this winter yet, which we still have a lot of winter left, uh, check those out. But today it's all about Ted Nugent. We're not going to uh, beat around the bush at all. We're going to get Ted on the line. We're going to ask him your questions right now. Yo. Mr. Nugent. Yo, sir. Dan Schmidt, Brian Lovett, Deer Talk Now, Deer and Deer Hunting. Thank you very much for taking time out of your schedule to join us this morning. My pleasure. You gentlemen deserve me. I think it might be the backstrap factor. So let's celebrate, shall we? <laughs> oh, let's celebrate. And how can you celebrate? You just had double knee surgery. Are you in a lot well, of pain? I know there's only one thing more dangerous than Ted Nugent, and I'm not talking about a sow grizzly bear up close with cubs. I'm not talking about a coiled rattlesnake at close range. I'm talking about Ted Nugent with more confidence. So, so when, when I have the confidence that my knees will take me mountain climbing and back into the hinterland, I, I haven't been able to for the last, oh, at least 20 years because of my bad legs. Not to mention the unbelievable James Brown dancing I will ensue upon this tour of the 2014 summer. Uh, I'm feeling mighty good. You know, the pain is outrageous, Dan, but I just, just before I get on with you guys, I think it's important to celebrate here at Deer and Deer Hunting, that I got off the phone with Daniel Vargas. He's the director of OperationFinallyHome.org. This is a charity, OperationFinallyHome.org that builds cost-free custom homes for the heroes of the U.S. military who have uh, suffered serious, life-threatening and debilitating injuries. So because I am so blessed, so humbled, so inspired by these great men and women who are going through every day way more pain and suffering than I will ever know, most of us will ever know, that I just close my eyes when the pain gets really bad in the middle of the night because, I mean, I literally had both of my knees sawed off. <laughs> and it, I just realized what a wimp most of us are. I certainly am a wimp if I can uh, consider this to be serious pain when I got buddies with their arms blown off and all their skin burned off. So it, it's, a, it's a reminder that every day you're lucky enough to get up and do the things you love to do in America, and especially in a deer hunting environment, the importance of wearing safety harnesses when we're elevated, when we go into that tree stand or that ladder stand. You should be thanking God every day that the heroes have paid the ultimate price for our freedom and that we should use those freedoms to the best of our ability every day. So there's a lot of lessons to be learned when you have your knees replaced. A lot of lessons to be learned on that, but a lot of lessons to be learned by watching you in, in your support of our troops. And that's, that's very admirable. I think it's something that's almost taken for granted is that uh, the work that you've done, um, not only honoring our our men and women in combat, but uh, recognizing them through such great projects as those. Well, and I'm not alone. I think I think I think we at Deer and Deer Honey, and I try to weave it into my articles on occasion. But I think we are so intoxicated by the the spirit of the great outdoors, the spirit of the wild, the spirit of the white-tailed deer and the mule deer and all the exotic deer and the, the hunting, pure hunting lifestyle. That oftentimes when we when we roll up our sleeves and prepare to write an article for Deer and Deer Hunting or we get on DeerandDeerHunting.com or I communicate with people, all of a sudden you don't think about anything else. You only think about deer hunting. <laughs> so I think even in the environment that isn't escape, it's the ultimate physics of spirituality escape, our deer hunting lifestyle. But let's make it a point, as my editor, Mr. Schmidt, and as my blood brother, Brian, let's uh, make it a point that, yeah, we have 
have to get into the science, we have to get into the methodologies and the history and the tradition and the spirit and the, the important conservation and the important environmentalism of what it takes to get back straps. But I think we should always remember that freedom is not free. And without, without diluting or, or reducing the impact of our deer hunting communication, I think we should probably, as often as possible, give a nod to our fellow deer hunters in the military, because I'm going to tell you, my travels and experiences with all these cherries, somewhere in the neighborhood, 90 plus percent of military heroes are deer hunters. And those that aren't deer hunters that I've taken deer hunting become deer hunters. So it is a, a universal instinct that touches all of us. So I, I, I appreciate everybody that does everything to pay back and say thank you to the heroes of the military because freedom is not free. Absolutely. And, it, you know, if, if people are watching this, they haven't seen this, we are blessed and lucky to have Ted Nugent in every issue of Deer and Deer Hunting. You can get a, a subscription to Deer and Deer Hunting for 19 bucks. I don't think you can buy coffee for two days for that. And online as well. And so, online. Yeah. You can get it on your digital uh, tablets. You can also read his exclusive blog at DeerandDeerHunting.com. Like I said, we're lucky to have have you on as one of our members, Ted. One, uh, what, let's get to it right away. The, we, we, t we fielded questions for the past two hours. I can't even uh, print off the amount of questions that we've gotten from Facebook, Twitter, and on our website. The first one, Ted, is there a crusade to end sport hunting in America? Yes, absolutely. Well, we're, and that's another uh, honest uh, acknowledgement that while we're intoxicated by our love for the hunt, while we, we're having wonderful, uh, the epitome of quality family time at the range and at deer camp and in scouting and putting in food plants, all the things that consume our deer hunting uh, 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 obsessions, we really do obsess, we love it because we are all created to utilize and manage and maximize and optimize God's creation of renewability. We can go into more detail about those items at another time. But yes, the Humane Society of the United States literally are successful in banning lion hunting, which takes lion hunting from Californians out of the asset column into the liability column. The Humane Society of the United States has got game commissioners and game agencies convinced that Luminox are unethical. We have, we have anti-hunting groups that all they do is live and breathe to ban dove hunting in Michigan when there are more doves in Michigan than all the quail, pheasants, woodcock, and grouse combined, which are legal to hunt. So we're not allowed to hunt the number one game bird in the world where there are more of them than the game birds we are allowed to hunt. So this is so bizarre. It is so insidious. We still have 10 states. We just were successful once again and eliminate another state where Sunday hunting is banned. We're in the land of the free and the home of the brave and a First Amendment guaranteed religious freedom. You have 10 states still in America that don't allow a, a farmer to hunt on his own farm with his son or daughter on Sunday. So yes, there is a crusade to end all of this. And those that don't know it, those that aren't members of the National Rifle Association or Safari Club International or their state firearms organization or hunting organizations. Those that are not involved are the Humane Society of the United States' best friends, because if you divide, you will conquer. And the animal rights people have a real emotional lie that they've been able to scam for all these years, that if you send them 20 bucks, you'll save a puppy, or you'll save a raccoon from a dangerous leg hole trap, which of course, there's no such thing as a leg hole trap. There's only foothold traps. But yes, there is a war against hunting. There is a war against gun ownership. There is a war against freedom. And those that are so clueless, such low information voters, even if they do vote, um, that's the real tragedy. Apathy, disconnect equals ignorance. So everybody should be a member of the NRA. Everybody should join organizations. Safari Club International is coming on real strong. There's a lot of great organizations out there, but number one, Dan and Brian, increase and mo make more effective your constant communication with your senators, your congressmen, your representatives, your governors, your mayors. Make sure that the deer in an urban area aren't 
a liability because you take tax dollars to hire sharpshooters when there's plenty of bow hunters around that would utilize this precious resource with responsibility, share it with soup kitchens, home shelters, etc., etc., etc. So that's a long answer, which is typical for me, but it's very involved, it's very detailed. So the answer is absolutely. And Dan, Brian, that that question even exists is an acknowledgement and an indictment that so many people are clueless of this culture war that would end all the things that we take for granted because hunting is perfect, self-defense is perfect, and there are insidious organizations and forces that would ban all these perfect things in an instant if they could. Very well said, Ted. Um, the next question comes to us from Christopher Sargent, and it's kind of along the same lines, but he asks, what can I do to help keep our guns safe? Well, obviously, i got to tell you, Dan and Brian, I travel all over. In fact, I think it's important here, if I may insert this uh, answer to that question. Uh, number one, thank you for allowing me to do this at Deer Talk. Thank you, everybody out there who is engaged and communicate. Thank you for all the wonderful support for my Deer and Deer Hunting uh, uh, com blogs and my Deer and Deer Hunting magazine uh, 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 writings. But even as I had my knees replaced, the doctor's a bow hunter. The nurse is a bow hunter. The security guy outside my room is a deer hunter. The, the gal coming in with the medicines, her whole family, it's all about deer hunting everywhere I go. I didn't run into one soul in the last week. I had my knees replaced one week ago. And I'm laying here in bed right now with two big ice packs on my knees. My knees are really adorable. Virtually immobilized, I can only get around on a walker temporarily every day for my therapy. But that question is 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 another in indication that what we celebrate, deer and deer hunting, is universal. It's everywhere out there. And the number one way we could take back our country, the number one way we can guarantee our Second Amendment will always be rock solid that our deer hunting will always be about science and sustainability and family hours of recreation and revenue generating value of precious resources is if we are engaged in the number one way, a membership in the National Rights Association. Anybody that's not a member, I, I really humbly beseech you, join the NRA immediately. Get everybody you know to join the NRA. You know, we have Sunrise Safaris, Dan and Brian, where we book hunts all around the country, and I guide and outfit a bunch of hunts every year. You know you're not even allowed to go on a hunt with me if you're not a member of the NRA. You can't be in my band if you're not a member of the NRA. I, should, I, I probably didn't say it before the surgery, but I probably should have told someone that you can't replace my knees unless you're a member of the NRA. But luckily, everywhere I go, everybody is a member of the NRA. But we need to expand that. And our friends at school and church, the workplace, at deer camp, the bowling alley, the barbecue, no matter where we are, being a member of the NRA, believe me, I talk to politicians every day. The NRA membership is the indicator of whether they should stand up for our Second Amendment rights or not. So more members of the NRA is a more guarantee that our elected officials will make sure that wildlife is ours in the asset column and that we have the right to keep and bear arms. And again, the Second Amendment does not exist for deer rifles. The Second Amendment has absolutely nothing to do with deer hunting or hunting of any kind. The Second Amendment is about free people never being forced into unarmed helplessness. I hope everybody gets that. I hope everybody is a member of the NRA and signs up everybody they know. Even gifts, give away gifts of membership. I do it 100 times a year. It's a great, it's a great cause, and I mean, I personally agree with you. Um, I, th I think that it, it's not only um, worthwhile, but th this is where we're going we're gonna to take this topic to another level, Ted. And I said, when, when I posted this to Facebook, as you know, Facebook brings out every color of every fabric of our society and every every uh, walk of life I, I guess I should say and I said you want to ask a a non complimentary question go ahead and here's the first one and it comes from Max Kulik and Max says Ted 
Does it bother your conscience in the least bit that you use your celebrity persona to push your own selfish agendas? Uh, no, it doesn't at all. In fact, I'm convinced that this experiment, self-government, is a decree from God. I really do. I believe that our founding fathers were touched by divine intervention because I don't believe that God believed in emperors or kings or despots or dictators. And so the experiment, self-government, was a break from slavery. The, 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 the creation of the United States of America, where people leaving Europe and Britain and the, the, the tyranny of King George to live what they knew in their hearts and souls to be a free life. And experiment self-government is outlined with the self-evident truth that we find in the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and in our own heart and soul that we know we have the right to utilize God's precious resources. And as a member, as a participating member of this experiment self-government, I am convinced our founding fathers wanted us to all remain engaged they wanted us to voice our opinions at school, at church, at the town hall meeting, to our elected officials, in the media. The media is even referenced in the First Amendment. And so, no, not only don't I feel guilty using whatever resources I possibly have to further the agenda of the vast majority of caring, thinking, conscientious, educated, giving American families, but I feel an embarrassment for those that don't. We, I actually have people tell me to just shut up and play guitar. We don't want to hear about your politics. And I go, well, octung, baby. I <laughs> mean, because there's already places like that where you're not allowed to speak up. And it's called Cuba. <laughs> and it, it's, it's places where there's still communism and there's still dictators and there's still tyranny and slavery. So, no, I don't. I feel I could not be more proud. I wish. I'm going to read you a letter. Dan, Brian, would you indulge me a moment? I think this might be the most powerful statement that you and I could possibly research and provide at Deer Talk. Do we have any commercial breaks that we have to take? Do I have to be cognizant of a, of a breakdown shortly? Absolutely not. We're, we're, we're letting you go as long as you want to go. Dan, Brian, <clears throat> my fellow deer hunting blood brothers, I just got a pile of mail, and I do this every day, but I'm going to read you off the cuff a letter dated February 25th. Now, the reason it's a, a 10 days old is because I went in for surgery, and it was piling up a little bit. Because you know, Dan, I'm pretty quick. Uh, when you email me or text me, I'm probably the quickest responder Instant. I've ever experienced. Am I right, that? <laughs> Instant, yes. Yes, and I'm busier than all of you. But my point is, is I really really care and this would be the ultimate answer to Matt or, or Max whatever his name was Max yes um, and, uh, this is a letter I received um, just in the mail while I was in the hospital dated 20 February 25 2014 dear Ted and by the way this isn't isolated I get these all the time dear Ted I'm a 65 year old Vietnam veteran flew Cobra gunships to the 334th Area Weapons Company in 69 and 70. Our call signs were the Playboys, Raiders, and Dragons. Every mission we flew was in support of American troops in combat with enemy forces. We saved a hell of a lot of American lives, killed lots of the enemy, and got our asses shot off. I am currently a 100% disabled veteran due to a broken neck in a crash, survivor of prostate cancer, Agent Orange and diabetes, Agent Orange. I was drafted at 18 and flying helicopter gunships in Vietnam at the ripe old age of 20. I love my country as well as the band of brothers I served with in that era. My best friends are those I served with and the ones I keep in my heart. When I'm down, I talk to one of them to pull me out of a rut and set me straight. I can count on them for anything, financial, spiritual, or a shoulder to cry on. They are my support group. Although, as a group, we spent less than three years together, there is a bond that will never be broken. We are all from vastly different backgrounds, yet we all view things very much the same way. I would describe us as conservatives with a chip on our shoulder. As we continue to die off, we don't have someone to actually speak for us on issues concerning this great country. However, 
together. We do have Ted Nugent, who from our perspective could very well be one of us. Your views and perspectives as to the current direction of this country echo our frustrations. You are totally on the mark and have the deleted guts to tell it the way it is. From the president, along with the other worthless politicians destroying this country, even some of the military leaders have buckled under the pressure by retiring or keeping their mouths shut out of employment fear. Political correctness has created a leadership of minds. God bless you, Ted. You are an army of one supported by thousands who do not have the platform of speech you possess. Stand, call, and stand tall and kick the bleep out of these hypocritical bleeps. From decimating CNN to confronting the liars who are neutering this country, please continue to be our voice, ensuring our fight was not in vain. As we say to each other as combatants, thanks for your service, and we extend that homage to you. Sincerely, Stephen Wilt, Louisville, Kentucky. Well, that's awesome. I, th it's, I mean, that's that, not only incredible words, uh, I have to thank you for sharing that with us. It's, it's pretty powerful stuff. Well, the, that answers an awful lot of questions. How could I possibly give credence to those that hate me when I've got buddies who in, were in the war that I did not serve in, who embraced me as one of them, and thanked me for saying what I say, how I say it, and on the issues that I speak up on. I, you know, I, I don't need any more encouragement than from a letter of a, you know, and again, we have hundreds of these, Dan. Shemaine's got boxes of these letters from heroes of the U.S. military who thank me for using the freedoms that they died providing. So I know I'm on course, and, and I'm not only am I not deterred, I am inspired, and I'm turning up the heat. I am going to stop the enemies of America that infest our government and our media, and sadly, some of our society. So I know I'm on the right course, and I'm very proud to have these kind of blood brothers. Incredible stuff. Great show. Well, we're going to cut it short there for this week. I want to let you know that we're breaking this Ted Nugent show into two parts because we have so much awesome content here to bring you. So for this week, I'm Dan Schmidt along with Brian Lovett. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next week for another special episode with Ted Nugent right here on Deer Talk Now.